Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Democrats are worried. They are worried about these midterms. Now, Democratic strategists are agonizing about the headwinds and the closing stretch of the 2022 campaign, with some fearing the election will be worse for the party than polls indicate. They say this week, the Cook political report changed its House forecast for, from a GOP gain of 10 to 20 seats to a pickup of 12 to 25 seats. The Senate map is narrowing for Democrats with hopes in Wisconsin and Ohio fading. It's Arizona becoming closer and Pennsylvania Democrat John Fetterman's rough debate performance adding to anxieties. It's a for months Democratic candidates in competitive races have risen above Joe Biden's low approval rating and weathered concerns about the economy and the country's direction with the strength rarely seen for a party in power during a midterm election. Now comes the moment of truth. Can they pull off one final act, you say, before the election? Now they said, and they quote, they said, I definitely think that the political gravity started to reinforce itself. That's a Sean uh, McElwee, uh, executive director of the Democratic affiliated polling firm, Data for Progress, said there's concern that the situation would deteriorate. So you're probably going to see polls worsen. It's possible Democrats underperform those polls as well. Uh, he's also worried that the undecided voters are leaning more toward the GOP down the stretch that Democrats aren't doing enough to persuade independents. He said for him and others, there's a nagging fear that polls are once again underestimating Republicans as they did in 2020. He predicted it won't be as bad as 2010 and 2014 because Democrats are mobilized, yet he expects them to lose both chambers and end with a 49 Senate seats and 196 House seats. He said the warning uh, flare highlights uncertainty in the final stages of what has been a highly unpredictable and chaotic campaign. It's a momentum has seesawed throughout the year. Favorite Republicans early on is swinging toward Democrats during the summer and now Supreme court uh, overturned Roe v. Wade and lately tilting back to GOP in the closing stages. They were disenchantment and rising costs and crime on the minds of voters. Biden's approval rating is in the low to mid forties. It's about the same as Donald Trump and Barack Obama and their party suffered a heavy midterm losses. Now let me say something. A lot of people are pissed off. They're pissed off about the economy. They're pissed off about inflation. That's the two major things. Why a lot of people is going to vote uh, Republican or a lot of people are just disenchanted. Why in the hell are you going to put the same policies back in power? I mean, if you're paying the gas, you're paying right now, you're paying the food you're paying right now. Why would you want to continue two more years of that? Bottom line, let's call it what it is. Say what you want. We wasn't paying these high gas prices two years ago. We wasn't paying that. Inflation was not where it was at two years ago. Oh, but you got to get Trump out because he was talking, saying mean things, mean tweets. Oh, he's just so mean. I can care less how mean somebody is as long as my family not suffering when it comes to no gas prices, my family not suffering for no food, uh, family not suffering. Uh, when it comes to the economy and, and my personal family and also all of black America, black America is in a worse position now when it comes to the economy than we were two years ago. We were, you have to admit that on top of that, the same party that black Americans went overwhelmingly vote for betrayed them by propagandizing them as soon as they got into office claiming they are this purveyor of Asian hate until they get a hate crime bill benefiting a group of people who was not here for 400 years, who didn't endure chattel slavery, didn't endure any of that. But yet this group of people get a bill after a few months, not even years, a few months of people attacking them. And then they lied on black Americans. The majority of the attacks on Asians were by white supremacists. It was not by black people, but they highlighted the few homeless black people that did that. And that's how they got a bill. But then they want to lie and say it's for everybody. But then you look at the bill, it says Asian, 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 anti-Asian, Asian, Asian, Asian. Said nothing about black folk in there. Said nothing about nobody else. You can't lie to us no more in a bill. We can just pull the bill up now and just read it and see what you say is true or false. On top of that, Biden got in office, opened up the floodgate and 2 million illegal immigrants then showed up in this country. Black people don't even have homes. They're not homeowners. That's 2 million people that need a place to stay. 2 million. Now you have illegal immigrants demanding uh, more money on their jobs. And they're not even citizens of our country. You got cities that are trying to get them to vote in elections. Washington, D.C. 
New York is trying to do it, but they, put, they filed a lawsuit about that and rightfully so, because only citizens of a country should be voting. No other country in the world would allow illegal uh, uh, immigrants to vote in elections. They don't even allow resident, permanent residents to vote in elections. That's only afforded to citizens of that said country. But they're breaking all kinds of federal laws. But when the Haitians tried to come over, oh, you made sure to get them Haitians out. You, you, don't, you don't open up the door for the Haitian people or any other black person that tried to come across that border illegally. The laws work real well when it comes to black folk. We've seen that. We've seen how, how, how they was on horses gaffling up black people. When have we seen any kind of pictures of them gaffling up uh, people from Latin America? When have we ever seen that? And yet this is the, the group of people that black folks are supposed to go out and vote for. That's why, that's why I always tell y'all, what did they do with your last vote? Two years ago, what did they do with it? Not a freaking thing. And you want to go out there and vote for them again? But you're, like I told y'all before, a lot of black folks just believe in performative voting. They don't believe in voting uh, to actually get something. But the Democrats are worried because a lot of you have, have been speaking up and saying, no, I'm not going to reward this party to no freaking vote. I'm not. This, this is ridiculous. We watching the Af Afghanistan people get money. Ukrainians got an open blank check, but let the black people ask for some money. Let them ask. They getting thrown that, you know what I'm saying? They don't get nothing at all. You ain't thrown a bone. Now they they're worried that the tightening is happening to them. They worried about that race in Georgia. You know, they, they worry about the people voting more for Republicans. They say that Biden is actually a drag on the Democrats across the board. And they say they don't see that changing. They also said in the best case scenario in the minds of half dozen democratic strategists, they say they narrowly keep control of the Senate and limit their losses in the house to single digits. They say in the worst case scenario, the bottom falls out in the end. It says stages and a host of Biden won districts and states flip and say handing the GOP a size of majorities that can flex muscle for two years at Pennsylvania race long seen as a strong pickup opportunity for Democrats cause waves and say of nerves and say among party officials as the health effects of Fetterman strokes showed during Tuesday's debate. Obviously that was really tough to watch to say, I had no idea why John and his team agreed to a debate. Yeah, the man's not healthy. John Fetterman is not healthy at all. And number two, he pulled a gun on a black person. Why would you go vote for that guy? And three, why he always walking around in a freaking hoodie all the time? Now, if it was a black man, you wouldn't take him serious if he walked around in a hoodie all the time. Talking about, okay, what's wrong with him? Why you always got a hoodie on? And, and you, I'm not going to take you serious. You need to dress up and dress the part and look professional and show me that you're going to be serious about the, the job. It's called dressing up for the job. Like me, I dress up for the job that I'm doing here. You don't see me in hoodies every day on, on my platform, do you? No, not to say I won't wear one every blue moon, but it's not going to be an everyday dress because we have a professional attire here because number one, we respect our, our audience, respect our community. And when you go watch, you know, other groups make their news, how do they dress? Professional, professional attire, right? That's how you do that. Same thing when you're a politician, it needs to be professional attire. And that guy Fetterman, like I said, this is outside his hell for him pulling a gun on an innocent black man. I covered this on my podcast. No. Well, you vote for Dr. Oz. I'm not saying nothing about that. If you want to vote for Dr. Oz, you can. Is that what you want to do? I'm a firm believer of sticking it to the Democrats. And because the reason why I believe in sticking it to the Democrats and voting the other side as a protest vote is because you want it quantified on paper that black people, oh, they came to vote, but then they voted the other side. So when they make these com these commentaries that following day, that Wednesday and that Thursday after election day, then it can be a conversation about black people now because they need black people to come out there and vote. Black people decide elections because they lied to you saying we 13% of the population or 14% they lied. 13% of the population don't decide elections. They don't. Black people can keep Democrats in power. Black people can put Republicans in power. We can do that easily. Whether we vote for Republicans or even just say, you know what? We good. We're going to chill out. 
We just not gonna vote for Democrat. And that's why I'm on with it. Whether you chill out or you vote for Republican is good enough for me. Cause I don't want these Democrats in office because they do nothing for black people. And every time they get in, in office, they screw us over. And, it, and everybody else gets something out of the Democrat party and black folk get nothing. So no, I'm, I'm, that's a wash for me. And also how I seen the Democrat party even treat my cousin. I also watched that, how dirty the Democrat party is right here in Texas. True be told, my cousin is running for county commissioner. She won her primary in, 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 the, in the county that she's in. She's gonna be on the ballot, right? Do you know my cousin ran as a Democrat for Congress and all the dirty things that the Democrat party did? The Democrat party do not believe in letting the people select anybody. They will throw dirt on someone's name. They will pay for all kind of uh, advertising. They, they, the Democrat party, when they have somebody keep prop, you wonder why somebody stays in office 20, 30 years It's because the Democrat party wanted that way. They crush challengers. They do this. A lot of dirty underhanded things happen. But then when my cousin had lost that and the way it was lost, I didn't even know it went down like that till she was showing me, right? My cousin actually said, you know, the Republicans actually came to her, true story. After the election, why don't you come and run on this side? They say, cause some of the things you believe in, we believe in. So she decided to say, okay, well shoot, I was running with y'all. And she won her primary. She's on the ballot for, and then, Governor, the whole governor of Texas endorsed my cousin. I was shocked to see that one. Endorsed her for her local election. And now uh, my cousin, I, I hear cooning because I, I don't have them kind of people in my family. But a lot of people in my family are very business oriented. I can say that much. We believe in upward mobility. And I'm like, okay, they treating you that way, but the Democrats that you've been voting your whole life treat you like trash? You know what I'm saying? This, this is what you do to other black people. They've been voting for you their whole life. Yeah, she went to the other side and they literally got the whole governor gave her endorsement. That's, that, that was interesting. That's what I'm saying. The Democrats are being exposed every freaking day. And I'm not even in no politics. I'm not going to run for anything in politics because eh, no, I'll do better suited what I'm doing. But the Democrats should be worried because more and more black people are gone. See, like the Democrat party lost my cousin. They lost her. They lost her. And there's more and more people that's young. And cause my cousin was a few years younger than me. She young, younger than me. That's a young, another younger person that you lost. And it's going to continue to happen that way. So Democrats, you need to be very worried. Your biggest electorate that you have right now, that, that, you know, baby boomer, like I told y'all every two years, y'all losing thousands of people just to life happening every two years. And y'all are scared because by 2030, y'all are not going to know what to do at that point. But y'all let me know what y'all think about, you know, Democrats worrying. They are so worried about this election and, and they should be.